So um, um, we added something to the open session agenda, um, reflecting uh, a, a development, I guess I would say. The story began actually um, earlier this summer uh, when Jeff made an appointment to come see me and he uh, proceeded to ruin my day. In fact, he certainly ruined my month. I might even contend he ruined my summer. Um, he informed me uh, that he planned to do something he was completely entitled to do, uh, and that is to retire, and to retire um, in uh, January of, he said 2017, I kept pleading for 2020, but he won, and so it is 2017. So in January, Jeff will be retiring. Um, uh, and uh, needless to say, uh, he's a true NHRI giant, and he will leave behind a remarkable legacy of accomplishment. So this is his last council meeting, um, which is why we decided to add this to the open session um, to sort of be able to give a chance for me to say some things, importantly for Jeff to be able to say some things. So I'm going to give this introduction. Um, and then uh, Jeff is going to give uh, some reflections on some of the work uh, that he has done uh, at NHGRI and I'm sure particularly focused around the technology development program, um, which has his fingerprints all over. So my objectives uh, for this introduction um, are also twofold. Um, one, I want to, why is this just not advanced? Do you have to use this? Oh, there we go, I guess you have to use this. So first thing, we, the objective of this uh, of the introduction is for me to thank a true NHGRI and genomics legend. Um, but the second thing, of course, is to ha find as many embarrassing photos of Jeff as we could <laughs> so as to inhibit future retirements of outstanding NHGRI leaders because they know that if they retire on me, I'm going to embarrass them in an open session of council. So it's a new tradition we're going to start. So, and remember, we collect everything at NHGRI, including lots of photos, and so. Um, but before I get to that, um, um, let me give some just general bio details um, about Jeff, if you don't know um, his full history. He uh, got his bachelor's degree from Case Western University in 1973. He got his PhD in cell biology from Carnegie Mellon University in 1979. He then did a postdoc at Yale University through 1984, and then he joined the faculty at University of Kentucky. His research and um, training in early faculty research examined the regulation of mRNA abundance uh, control and mammalian non-muscle cell motility. Then 1999, 1992 was pivotal uh, for NHGRI uh, because uh, we recruited him um, from the University of Kentucky uh, to what was then the NCHGR, actually. It was Jane Peterson. Um, who actually uh, was instrumental in bringing him here because she needed somebody to help manage the genome sequencing, or really it was the Genome Centers program at that stage, was very early in the days of the Human Genome Project. And that was a stage, remember, the centers were just building uh, physical and genetic maps of human model organism genomes. And I'm told from our historical legacy data that he considered him, Jeff considered himself a cell biologist, and um, in his usual very modest way, he thought the move to genomics and to extramural administration would be a stretch for him, um, uh, just but it once again illustrated how flexible and nimble he actually was because he took to the opportunity quite well. It didn't take long. So he arrived in 1992. It didn't take long. Uh, before it was recognized that Jeff was going to have a lot to contribute to the Institute. So in 1992, he arrived, and you can see by 1993, he was already winning one of many awards. Uh, this one might have been related to his choice of sweater. We're not quite sure, but, <laughs> but he won something from Jane Peterson one year after having arrived. Uh, it wasn't very surprising. A year later, he won yet a different award. This time, he knew to wear a tie to the award ceremony. <laughs> 19, 1996, two years later, Jeff was asked to take the leadership of the DNA sequencing technology development program at the Institute, and the rest is history when you really think about it. Uh, he skillfully, and think about the timing of that, 1996, skillfully managed a diverse portfolio of grants across a range of nucleic acids related technologies, uh, what would eventually become the $1,000 genome program. Um, in fact, I would contend the name Jeff Schloss is largely synonymous with the $1,000 genome program. I think you all know that program has resulted in a reduction in DNA sequencing costs by nearly a million fold, in addition to catalyzing an entire industry built around genome sequencing, including clinical diagnostics. Obviously, Jeff didn't do all that himself, but he led NHGRI's program 
And I think the fact that our program contributed so much to that important technology development surge, obviously also including the private sector, but without any question, um, uh, Jeff deserves remarkable accolades for that. I, I didn't start that program, and so it's really easy for me to brag about it. Um, and I actually have probably had very little to do with it because Jeff was already ably leading it when I became director. So I always make the point that, in my opinion, I think this technology development program that Jeff has led for all these years is arguably the most successful technology development program in the history of NIH. And I'd be happy to argue with anyone who doesn't agree with that. But needless to say, I think even during this remarkably intense period, and it was obviously very intense to imagine being at the helm of that important period, uh, Jeff actually seemed to enjoy himself quite a bit. You know, you can hear he, once again, he's uh, dressed up as a human microarray in the early 2000s. We didn't know exactly what date this was. Here you can see by 2003, he was there drinking and celebrating the end of the Human Genome Project, looking like this was about his eighth glass of wine, by my <laughs> assessment. And then even enjoying New Year's and able to smile on New Year's of 2006. So he seems to celebrate a lot. Um, during this time, not only was he at the helm of the $1,000 Genome Technology Development Program, he had actually took on other responsibilities as well. Let me list a few of these. He, he coordinate and has been coordinating the Centers of Excellence in Genomic Science Program. He worked uh, at the early days in particular in the Human Microbiome Project. He's also recognized across the NIH. We couldn't keep him a secret. So Ilya Serhuni, the former NIH director, for example, when he was starting the NIH Roadmap Program, he asked Jeff to serve as one of the two co-chairs of the Nanomedicine Working Group. By the way, Jeff was the only non-institute center director to be a co-chair of one of those working groups. And he also served as the NIH representative to the Federal Working Group for the National Nanotechnology Initiative. And finally, he was the founding member and chair of the NIH Bioengineering Consortium, or BEACON. But of course, then there were uh, transitions. Not only did have those responsibilities, shortly after I became director, there were uh, transitions um, in terms of some of the senior leaders of the extramural program um, departing. Uh, this is actually a picture taken at uh, Mark Iyer and Jane Peterson's retirement party. I don't think he was smiling because he was happy they were leaving. He was just smiling because he always seems to be smiling in all these pictures. But um, once again, uh, I think it was one of these examples of his modesty that when I started to put together a new leadership team, pending retirements, a lot of reorganization of the institute, I turned to Jeff and, and asked him um, would he be interested in assuming a, a greater leadership role, really having mostly just looked after his program, not having run a division or been a supervisor of many people. And he once again modestly thought this was going to be a big stretch for him, um, but it actually really wasn't. He actually became a division director, I think fell into this role remarkably and slid into it remarkably well. And, um, and again, I, has done a terrific job, I think, in being the first director of the Division of Genome Sciences. Uh, lots and lots of recognition uh, throughout all this. I already mentioned some of it in the early days. Uh, he's won the NHGRI Individual Merit Award at least 10 times. We stopped counting, I'm told, in 2014, so it may have been more than 10. He's won the NIH Director's Award six times. In 2012, he was a finalist for the Service to America Award, SAMI Awards, which I've talked about, uh, which is a very high honor uh, to even be considered seriously for one of those awards in, in federal service, which is an award given out by the Partnership for Public Service. Um, I told counsel about this, and I'll just tell the story again for those who don't remember it. And I'm on the program committee for the AGBT meeting um, um, every year, uh, in this case in Marco Island. And uh, Jeff humbly, in, in 2014, Jeff humbly submitted an abstract just for consideration as a poster or maybe a concurrent talk. And I, I, I when it ever involves anybody from NHRA, I get very quiet on the phone calls that decide which abstracts are going to get selected for talks. I just let the conversation of the other program committee members proceed. And they looked at this abstract and we got to consider and they said, this is ridiculous. Jeff should not only be giving a talk. We should have Jeff come tell us about the $1,000 Genome Program and the Technology Development Program at NHGRI. So they elevated him for the only time it's ever happened in this meeting from an abstract to basically a keynote talk. And uh, this is Jeff giving basically this opening keynote talk in the, in the premier session of that meeting every year, which is the technology session, um, where I think he's going to, he, he gave a talk, sort of his views of what um, the, the technology, the elements of success associated with the technology development program, and I think that's some of the same things I'm hoping he's going to talk about uh, when I'm done here. But that was a great honor, and it was a very well-received um, talk at that meeting. 
Um, and then in 2015, the Institute uh, actually nominated him um, to receive one of the highest level awards you can get, um, and that is um, the Department of Health and Human Services Career Achievement Award, and indeed he was selected for that, and there he is receiving the award um, from Secretary Burwell. So that's my mix of um, embarrassing photos, but hopefully very uh, 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 genuine accolades. So I guess I would just close before I turn this over to Jeff to hear his remarks on a talk that he entitled something very funky, and he's going to have to explain why he entitled the talk the way he did. Um, let me just say uh, a bazillion thanks. Um, I give those thanks just personally for myself, for everything Jeff has contributed in helping me as the director and prior to that to being a great colleague across the Institute. And I've known, I've known him since he arrived here, and I've always enjoyed interacting with him, and I very much have enjoyed having him part of the leadership team. I know NHGRI wants to thank him for all of his contributions since his arrival in 1992. In reality, you can tell NIH wants to thank him for all the things he's contributed to NIH. But probably most importantly, the genomics community and the entire biomedical research community wants to thank him because of all he has contributed and in his very impressive contributions in technology development uh, program here at NHGRI. So with that, Jeff, I hope I've embarrassed you enough. You can come up now and tell us what you want to share with us. Thank you. Well, thank, thanks, Eric. It's